everybody. I am out in the garage again today playing with my old old computer equipment. Uh, so I thought I'd shoot another video uh, for two reasons. One of which is I wanted to show the younger members of the audience how we used to have to load computer software uh, a couple of different ways but primarily the uh, the cheap way was off of cassette tapes and this was not the best way uh, not the most fun way it was very slow um, but it was inexpensive and uh, the media was inexpensive and you could trade uh, the cassettes with your friends and and record uh, software onto standard cassette tapes um, so we'll give this a go I fixed this up last night put a new belt into it and I know it works um, so we'll fire up a couple of programs on the uh, 1010 cassette drive. The computer I'm using for this video is an Atari 800 stock. It's got um, 48K of RAM in it. Um, so let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Um, there were a few different ways of loading software on the Atari 800, one of which I mentioned is the uh, cassette drive. They also uh, made use of cassettes. I'm sorry, uh, cartridges, and I have a cartridge in the slot right now. Uh, that is basic computing language program. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how fast it is to load software off of a cartridge, and then we'll talk about how the different uh, methods of, of program storage worked and what the pros and cons are. So I've got Frogger on cartridge right here. Pop this in. Close the lid, fire it up, boom, loaded. Cartridges are very fast. That's the fastest method of loading software. Uh, the problem with cartridges is that ROM chips back in the day were very expensive. Um, this is probably either an 8K or a 16K game. Um, and this game, I think, retailed for $39.95 or $49.95, something like that, uh, back in... Oh, this probably came out in 82 or 83. Um, so that's the best way if you if you have that option. And there were all sorts of things that, that were available on cartridges. Everything from games to uh, computing languages. I, I can show you basic real quick. Um, pop that in there. Fire it up. Boots to an editor. Tin. Print. Hello, Jared. 20, go to 10, run, and it prints the same thing infinitely. Break. So that's the basic cartridge. And, uh, basic was a good way of learning programming. That's, in fact, how I learned to program when I was, I don't know, eight years old or so. I uh, was on a computer, different model of the Atari 8 bit computers, and with uh, basic. Um, but now let's, let's try the tape drive and see how this works. Um, and the other reason that I wanted to make this video was uh, the, the process for loading software, especially machine language code, off of a cassette tape is a little bit strange um, and non-intuitive if you haven't done this before. Uh, so I think maybe there are people out there who have this old hardware, but they're not sure exactly how to load machine language code off of it. Uh, so we'll go through that program. We'll also, we'll, uh, also see how to load some uh, basic... Uh, files off of uh, off of cassettes. Um, so here is the official Frogger, same game, just in a different format. Um, the tapes were known as the inexpensive way. They take a lot longer to load. They're sort of uh, sketchy as far as they don't always load every single time. And we're going to cross our fingers that this one loads first on the first try. Um, but they also retailed for less. Um, I know that in in England, where Atari's Atari cassette drives and, and cassettes uh, selling software on cassettes was more popular than it was in the U.S., you could get uh, games on cassette for a few pounds. Um, I think this something like this probably sold for nine ninety five or nineteen ninety five somewhere somewhere in that range. Uh, so it was cheaper, uh, but it's also as you'll see a lot slower to load. So, what I'm going to do, this is a standard cassette tape that has software recorded on it. 
going to pop the drive open. Tape goes in just like a regular tape deck. Close it down, reset the counter, and I'm going to advance just a little bit because I want that tape, I don't want to see the clear tape leader. I want to see the, um, the actual, this is the leader, this yellow, it's either yellow or clear. Um, I want to see the actual recorded part of the tape. So I'm going to advance just a little bit farther until I can see that. There we go. Okay, so this is important. I push play, nothing's going to happen. The wheels don't spin. But I'm now ready to load off the tape. And I'm going to turn the volume up. This might produce some static. Um, I'm going to try not to turn it up too loud. Okay, we should be ready to load this off of the tape now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the start button. That tells the machine that we're going to load from a cassette drive. Power it on. It beeps. Nothing on screen happens. That means it's ready. So, as you can see, the wheels are still not spinning, but play is depressed. As soon as I hit return, the wheels start to spin. So it's going to load. There's a little bit of blank space at the beginning of the tape. And what we should start hearing is the data transfer sound. There we go. Turn that up a little bit. Now kids, you get to experience the fun of waiting for your cassette tape to load. And we also cross our fingers that it doesn't fail uh, sometimes if the motor doesn't run at a consistent speed on the tape deck, that can cause it to fail. Um, sometimes it fails for seemingly no reason. And you also have to remember that we're dealing with a cassette tape that is 35 years old. We're dealing with a piece of hardware that's 40 years old. Um, mine is in pretty good shape. I take good care of it. This is part of my personal collection. Um, but each of those beeps you hear is a block of code being loaded off of this cassette tape. It's recorded um, in uh, in audio format, um, very similar to the way that the old uh, the modems used to uh, transmit data over the phone line. They would use these bursts of uh, of uh, sound, data encoded as sound, more or less. So we're up at 32 on the counter. And we're still going. I'm going to leave this running in real time so you really get a sense of how long it takes to load software off of cassette. And keep in mind, this, this program is about 16 kilobytes. Now, assuming that everything loads correctly, it'll just drop straight into the program. The third way, while this is going, we have cartridge, we have cassette. The third way of loading software off of um, a recordable media for uh, the Atari 800 was a disk drive, which used um, five and a quarter inch floppy disks, the large ones, not the not the smaller ones, the three and a three and a half inch. Uh, these are five and a quarter inch. I don't have any out here in the garage currently. Um, I do have my disk drive over there, but it's not hooked up. Um, and it was, it was the best way because, as you probably know, these cartridges are not rewritable. The discs are rewritable. It's magnetic media. Um, you could put a lot more storage. Uh, the discs had a lot more storage, depending on uh, how what sort of density you used to format the discs. You could get anywhere from 88 kilobytes to uh, 300 kilobytes or so. Um, on a single disc, and then they were double-sided. You could flip it over and write on the other side. Um, so you could put multiple programs on a single disc. You could delete programs off the disc. It was just like using a, using a hard drive, in, in a way, a much smaller hard drive, but it was magnetic media that um, spins around in its, in its plastic jacket and 
Um, you can read and write to those and format them and um, put all kinds of different files on it. Um, and it didn't load as fast as, say, um, a, a ROM cartridge, but it was pretty quick. I mean, it would load in less than 20 seconds. It would load software, whereas the counter here is at 73, and we're still going, just trying to load a 16K uh, game of Frogger. But I think we're getting pretty close to the end. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, cassette was probably the budget choice. Not the most fun, not the best, but if you were on a budget, then it was fine. Um, and you could you could also write uh, your own. You could write your programs back to this. It took the same amount of time. It depends on how long your your program was, but uh, you could write your software back to back to cassette. You'd have to keep track of where it was and note the uh, note the counter numbers to uh, to let you know how far you had to rewind and fast forward um, to locate where your program starts, and then you'd load it from there. Um, and this, what we're, what we have in there right now is, um, is a pre-recorded cassette. Atari also sold some. They looked like these. They had these awesome, uh, 1970s style. I mean, this was, this was one of the very first, um, programs that they put out for this, um, Atari home computer. Copyright 1980. So this was written in, in 1979 or so. Um. And uh, this is States and Capitals. I'll see if I can load this one up. Um, we'll give it a shot. This one's actually a basic program uh, recorded on tape. Uh, there we go. Look at that. All right. So the counter ran all the way to 96. Um, but it did load, and it loaded on the first try. Um, so that's cool. I don't have a joystick plugged in right now, but if I did, we could play a game of Frogger. And you could play Frogger as much as you wanted uh, until you had to turn the computer off. And as soon as you turn the computer off, the program is out, is gone from memory. And if you wanted to play Frogger again, you had to go through that entire loading sequence. So, yeah, it's a lot different than it is today. Um, so, be happy that, uh, that you have things as nice as you do. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. But then again, back in the day, this was pretty cool. And I, it's it's still it's still pretty cool. It's fun to see these these old uh, games and, and learn about their history. Um, so let's try something else. I'm going to say goodbye to Frogger, even though we just got done loading it. I'm going to quickly rewind my cassette for the next time I need to use it, and then we will try States and Capitals. And this one's a little bit different. I'm also showing this because loading software that you use with Basic is a little bit different procedure than loading software this machine language that goes right into the into the RAM and, and you play it. So again we have another pre-recorded cassette tape. States and capitals. Now this is interesting. Game only or instructions in game, and uh, Atari had done a really a really cool thing. I don't know if any other manufacturers did this or not, but there are actually two tracks and two two tracks recorded on this cassette, and two heads in the cassette deck. Um, one of them is for data, and one is for audio. So you could do really cool things like you could while you're loading the data because you know it takes four or five minutes to load a game. Uh, you could also play an audio track which has music to entertain people or it gives the instructions um, And this is one of those tapes. That's what the instructions are. It's not just text on a screen It actually reads the instructions to you and it has some cool uh, Late 70s early 80s disco uh, to go along with it. So we'll fire this up um, I am going to run through the same procedure. We want to advance past the leader So we pop that in there Advance just a hair. Advance a little bit more until we see that brown tape leader. Okay, there's the tape leader. So this is ready to go. We push play. Now, because this is basic, we also need our basic interpreter. So we pop this open, put the basic interpreter in, close it down. Turn the TV back on. 
Now, we're not going to hold down start this time because we don't want to load machine language from the cassette. We want to load basic, which is on cartridge. So all we have to do is fire this up. And we see the ready prompt. That means basic is loaded. Now we type the magic command C-L-O-A-D, C load. Now what that's going to do is load software from the cassette. We do C load, we press uh, enter, we get our buzz. That means the tape is ready. Now the tape hasn't started rolling yet, but it's going to read off of that tape as soon as I press enter for the second time. I'm sorry, return, it's return on an Atari. Okay. So the wheels start turning, it's loading. Now what we're actually getting here is a preloader that's going to load the rest of the software. So this is not going to take very long. Um, and once it starts, it'll load a few blocks. Stick with me. Again, this isn't going to take very long. So it's ready, it says ready, and the wheels have stopped turning on the cassette deck. So I'm going to type run, which actually, before I do that, I can type list, and this is what it's loaded. This is the basic program. It's very simple. It shows something on the screen, and then it's going to load something else. This is just a loader. So we do run. The wheel started turning again, and it's loading the rest of the, uh, the program. Loading states and capitals. Copyright 1980 Atari. How well do you know your states and capitals? Very well or not so well at all? It's a good bet you're going to get some surprises playing Atari states and capitals educational games. You may even see some names, capitals in particular, that you've never heard of before. Not possible? <laughs> okay, when was the last time you took a trip to Juno, or Montpellier, or Pierre, or how about Dover? <laughs> are you beginning to get the picture? The names just mentioned are not only major cities, they're capital cities. If you're from the West Coast, do you think you can name the state from the East Coast and vice versa? And how about their capitals? You'll soon find out. There's nothing like learning and having fun at the same time. And that's exactly what States and Capitals is about. The computer's a great teacher. While you're trying to figure out your geography, you're going to have to get your spelling straight as well. If you misspell a state or capital, the computer won't accept your answer as correct, even though you really knew the answer. It should be interesting to compare your scores the first few times you play with your scores after playing several times. Whatever you do, don't give up until you can name all 50 states and capitals. Youngsters for family might want to get out a dictionary or perhaps even a map of the United States for learning guides because using references is just part of the learning process. There should be a point, however, when you do it all from memory. Okay, you're almost ready to start. See you in Bismarck. Let's see. Where's Bismarck? <laughs> All right, look at that, and it stopped. So while the instructions were playing and while that narrator was, uh, was reading to us, um, it was actually loading data in the background on a separate track of that cassette, which I think is really cool. Um, and uh, not all cassettes did that. As you can see, Frogger didn't have any audio recorded on there to play. While it was loading, you just get the, the beautiful data buzz. Um, but... This will give us instructions. Basically, it shows you a state on the map. Uh, you type in the state, you type in the capital, it tells you whether you're right or wrong and it keeps score. I'm not gonna go through the instructions because it takes a little while and the, uh, the gentleman on the tape just basically read them to us. So I'm gonna say no. So it's gonna continue to load states and capitals. It's gonna load the actual game. It just loaded the instructions. Yes, there's a lot of loading. It takes a long time. I think that's, if there's one takeaway that you get from this video, it's that cassette drives take a really long time. But now we get a cool, mu a cool tune to listen to while we load the rest of the game. So I can read what it says on the back of the box here. This program is an educational tool designed to teach you the geography of the United States. The computer draws a map and you must identify the state, 
and then its capital from the outline on the screen. The computer keeps score ages 10 to adult. Accessories required with this cassette. An Atari 400 or 800 personal computer system. Atari Basic, which is in the slot. Atari 410 program recorder. A 410 was the previous model of this. You can see that the design of this doesn't necessarily match this. This is an earlier computer model. This is a later tape deck model. And minimum RAM required is 16K. I don't know exactly how much they charged for uh, something like states and capitals back then. Um, it seems it seems sort of mind blowing that they would charge money for you know a few hundred lines of basic code. <laughs> but I mean, somebody had to write the code and put this together. But still, I mean, it's nowhere near as complex as as the machine code. And um, I mean, as you can see, when this when this loads. Um, we could go in and modify the program ourselves, which is actually kind of cool. If you're interested in learning BASIC, that would have been a good way to, to do it back then, was to buy some pre-recorded software and then uh, modify it yourself. With the tape, we have uh, the previous owner's handwritten instructions. Um, I love seeing stuff like this. Yeah, they the little reminder on, on how to get this loaded. So you know that somebody actually got some use out of this. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the instructions. I would have really liked to have the instructions, but... Okay, here we go. And I'm probably going to embarrass myself because... Um, I know a lot of states and capitals. I know all the... I'm sure I could get all the states. The capitals? There might be some that I've forgotten since 7th grade geography. Okay, so we see states and capitals. State number one uh, is highlighted here. This is obviously... Alaska, and the capital is Juneau, J-U-N-E-A-U, -E okay, so that one's good, that one's correct, okay, and we have uh, Washington State, and oh my goodness, I'm totally spacing the capital of Washington State, it's not Seattle, What's another big city in Washington? Uh, well, if we just push return, it's going to buzz at us and tell us the answer. Olympia. Okay. State number three. California. Capital. Sacramento. All right. So here's the cool part. Well, I think it's cool. So you can play this game and you can you can go through all the states and capitals and it does them in random order. And you know, it's a, it's a little game of learning your states and capitals. So if you hit the break key, it drops us out of the game because this is not machine language. This is just basic running in an interpreter. We can type list and look at the code for this. Um, we can see all the answers if we've forgotten any states and capitals. Um, and you could go in and you could modify this if you wanted to. Um, and you could save your modified version back to the tape if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, uh, it's very cool. Um, so that's really all I wanted to cover in this video. If you made it all the way through the, through the extra boring tape loading process, then I salute you. Uh, thanks for joining and I will talk to you later.